Okay, this is the last session for the for the semester, and this is a uh, real a reevaluation of what you've done. Um, and in case you're never going to take another screenwriting class again, um, this is sort of a, uh, a a session on what to do, uh, where to go, um, and how to finish your script, how to keep the habit of writing, uh, etc. Where to send your scripts, plans, options that you can do. Um, number one, um, everybody has either completed a short film by the end of the semester, um, and you're ready to launch into another short or possibly develop a feature, or you'll be close to having a first act done, uh, you know, and that's, that is, um, what essentially what I'm going to have when you're done is I'm going to give you a notes on your first act and evaluate how you might change your outline, um, going forward. Now, what I would expect you to do when you get the notes out after your first act, and in general, this is just for the future, you should always go through this process. As a matter of fact, I'm going to share. You should always go through this process, the process that we've been through. I'm going to repeat it briefly and show you where you are and where you need to go and then what you need to do. Um, so I'm sharing, and, and I really, can. this is the, your marketing, your script, we'll conclude with how to market your script. But there are some lectures that I've sent you and that we've gone over that I think are key for you to just continue to use over and over again. And the first one, which I think is very, very important for you guys to always be resetting yourself is the story and character development. This is how to th these concept, this concept of what your story is about. What is it? You know, the title, the, the, the genre, um, who the main dramatic engine is what is that person wants and how that shapes your story what they need to change about themselves or the world you should you know make sure that you're always staying on spine with your story is it a problem that they're trying to solve is it someone that they need to overcome always be on spine when you're thinking about that now when you go and you finish this script and you're going to develop another story after this um hold on one second wait hold on one second i got uh, to pause All right. Sorry about that. Uh, as I said to the class before I started recording, we are in a production and that was it. Someone coming in to get at, at something to take to the set. I'm going to reshare. Um, so spinal decisions need to be made when you're developing a story, but they need to be always considered on your story. Did you tell this story? Is this a story that you're you're telling? You know, ask yourself this. These are the this is the lecture you go to for that. Um, now, when you want to finish your story, this, these two lectures, checking your story step by step. If you don't take a class again, you got your first act done, you're, you're, you're ready to write your second and third act, finish your story. Um, these are, this is the checking your story, step-by-step -step story development are questions pointed towards you to analyze how you are doing in your story. It also could help you if you're going to take someone else's story um, and evaluate someone else's story. But let's just talk about your story. You know, did you set it up in the first, you know, five scenes? Do we know who we care about? You know, where it takes place? Do you have the time locked down? What the hero needs to change? You know, and have we establish or have you established a reason to root for them right in the middle of your first act you know between page 10 and 17 is there something that happens that causes the story that's the inciting incident right these are questions you should be checking right before you dive into your second act the debate remember before your event uh or your story locks in some big dramatic event that makes your story lock in the world might prevent your hero from committing to it Right, meaning the world, home environment, you know, um, or it could be the hero um, themselves. It could be a fear they have that is preventing them from going after what they want to go. And this is all first act stuff, you know, the event, you know, then there's going to be something specific that gets us out of your first act, right? And this is those of you who are writing the features. All of this will be done after the semester. And this is where I've gone over these concepts, but when you're not taking this class and you're and you should always be asking yourself these questions, right? You're done with your first act. Do we have a time lock? How much longer does your story? Is there is there two days, one day? Is there pressure, right? Do you have a time lock in your story? If you don't, can we 
try to create one? Can we look for one, right? That's something really important. Are the rules all established, right? Are the rules all established? Or I have a student writing a Western, you know, is this adhering, right? Or is it a, does it have some surrealism to it? Um, you know, is it, is this in the real world? Is it not in the real world? What are the rules, you know, stakes, Stakes for sure. Um, when I get out of your first act, going to your second act, the stakes better be pretty important, right? Your hero, um, your protagonist needs to really, we need to have them really want this. It needs to be important to make them happy, right? To fulfill themselves. And then we will invest, right? And remember, getting through your second act, right? Your first act coincidences help you set up your story, right? A coincidence will help you set up your story. A coincidence can continue to appear to move yourself into the second act, but not to get yourself out of the second act. Right halfway through your story is when you stop using coincidence. Use coincidences to complicate, not to resolve. Remember that. Tone, we talked about this earlier. At the end of your first act, ask yourself, what is what am I writing? Is it a comedy? Is it a drama? What kind of comedy is it? What kind of drama is it? Right? Lock in your tone. Right. And the rule for tone is no radical shifts. You can start light and get heavy. You know, we see that in a movie where it appears to be something light and fun. You know, Jordan Peele does this a lot. You know, oh, it's, it looks good and it gets goes real, real dark. But a radical shift from like a heavy movie to a light movie never works. You know, you don't go from a, a comedy to a dark drama. You want to be consistent with your tone, consistent with your tone. Here's something that those of you who will have finished your first act, so you're through your first act, jump to the bo bottom of your outline, go all the way to the end of your story and ask yourself, how, do, how is this going to end, right? How is this going to end? And remember, we talked about scene writing, look at the end and then reverse engineer it, right? So as you are doing the writing, the actual hardest part of your feature film, um, hold the end goal in sight. When you're going to that end goal, hold it in sight and be aware of where you're going, right? And, I, and this is when it will really apply when you're getting through your first act and your first act is done. Do I really want it to be this dark? Do I really want it to be this light, right? And then you're gonna look at your middle and make sure that your middle is working. And this is, this is why this note comes right after looking at the end. Once you look at your end, you have your first act written, you wanna simplify, focus, right? You might wanna combine characters. You want to see, do all these scenes matter? Do all these characters really pay off, right? You want to focus your outline. So a little outline work helps you, right? A little outline work helps you. And remember, your second act all is about the test, test, test. The conflict, when we get into your second act, it should seem like your, this is a long way for your hero to go, for your protagonist to go, right? And then we've talked about this. I'm not going to get into this into detail because we just did this in the last writing lecture is use dramatic irony, use dramatic irony, show bad, show bad, scare your audience, make your audience be concerned, show bad things can that can happen, you know, so we can anticipate and worry about the people who we care about, right? Dramatic irony, use it, use it, use it. And of course, as act two goes through, builds your stakes rise. Halfway through act two, you're gonna hit a point we call the midpoint. And this is where your hero, your protagonist takes responsibility for the quest. I've heard it said that uh, a, a good way to say the middle of your movie is when it stops being about anything except the climax. Everything from the middle of your movie is pointed towards the climax. Your hero is taking responsibility, is making decisions to save something, to win something, to get something, to solve the problem or to beat the villain. That's what the whole movie is about, right? And before you get there, right? And we would have checked this in your outline, is this still the correct test, right? Is this the way to get my hero in the ring? Is this the way to get my hero out of their Death Star, out of their witch's castle, right? Off the road and into the contest, right? make sure that you you we earn the change in the test right earn the change in the test before we get into the third act right and you know as you finish writing your second act remember 
even though your hero is ready for it, the pressure is increasing. This love is not possible. This goal is unattainable, right? It's, we're ready for it, but it's still really hard. And that, that's what makes a third act so satisfying. You're a hero who is ready for it, a protagonist who's ready for it, but it's still hard, right? And there's the moment of clarity, the epiphany. Oh, I can do this, I can do this, right? And the hero jumps in, right? And then climax, I remember the second act when we did the whole act structure thing, it's that epiphany, huge climax, right? And then a short wrap up really challenge test right make sure your hero confronts the protagonist make sure your hero solves the problem right solves the problem is the one who solves the problem right uh, make sure that dr dr the dramatic need is answered right um and then you owe this to me you owe a new order you know not odor order <laughs> um what is the new order right how do you establish the difference between the world here when we get in and the world at the end lastly let's say you're done you're done writing your screenplay um there will be themes that emerge and the reason i haven't talked to you guys about themes until now is a theme is what your screenplay means and what a theme is is what your protagonist does and what the result is. So I don't even want to talk about theme until you've written your first act and you're thinking about what your screenplay means. And it's literally your hero's actions and the result. That's your theme. Love conquers all, right? Love is useless, right? Um, fear equals failure. Whatever you're going to come up with your theme, it's who your protagonist is, what action they take, and what happens. That's how you identify themes and there's multiple themes you know in movies and you don't ever want to start writing with a theme so this is a, this is really a lecture that i want you guys to it's not a lecture it's a, it's questions it's a conversation that you should have for the rest of your life back and forth back and forth um and this is a tool that i've given you as you're reworking your scenes you know this is a tool that 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 will always help you write better scenes, you know, asking yourself all these questions as you're getting through, you know, what is the through line for the entire, this is essentially the first lecture, what is the spine, right? Um, always holding that in mind, getting to the scene, knowing that there's a conflict, every scene is a conflict, who's driving it, what do they really want, what are the relationships, where's the turn, the turn is the thing that changes the scene. And it should be at the end of the scene, right? And then going to the end, just like we talked about in your movie, my hero gets it. I'm going to anticipate the opposite at the top, anticipate the opposite at the top, right? So end with a negative, start with a positive, end with a positive, start with a negative. Go back and rework all that in your scenes, right? And then when you're done with your draft, when you're done with your draft, you're going to read it through. Right? You're going you're gonna to get through your second act, your third act. You're going to read it through. You're going to literally apply this to every scene. You're gonna it's, this is the, the rewrite, every scene. And you're going to ask yourself all these questions in every scene. Making sure first that the scene is on the spine, right? Then making sure that the scene has enough conflict to test your characters. We've seen what the, the dynamic of the relationships are in the scene. All of these questions. And finally, when we talked about the each line is a beat, right? Every word, every action is a beat that moves your scenes forward. I want you to make sure every moment counts, that everything that you've written is following all the format and we talked about. It. It's all in the present tense and it's all words and action after a brief setup in a scene that play out, that play out the scene, right? And have the turn have an expectation at the top that we either expect your hero to get it, protagonist to get it or not, and the end is the opposite, right? You build it, build it, build it. That, right, is the last thing you do, right? The last thing you do once you once you chunk out your, your screenplay is you finish, right? You finish all the way through. Now, you might ask yourself, all right, I finished with the screenplay, short film, feature film, what should I do? Well, before you do anything, what I'm going to tell you to do is not to market your script yet. 
I'm going to say that you need to keep writing, right? If you like this class, if you want to be a writer, you need to always be writing and you need to go back to this lecture and you need to run your, you need to always have a new idea, right? So you should have a screenplay that you're writing, you're finishing, but you should always remember we wrote, a, we wrote a 250 word synopsis. Anytime you have an idea for a, for a, a screenplay, you should write it up. You should create a synopsis for it you know, create it, you should have an, a, a library of ideas, a library of ideas that could be possible movies. There should be one at all times, right? That you're finishing, you're actually writing dialogue. And this is what we just talked about. You're, you're, you're either writing your, you're finishing your first act, writing your second act, writing your third act, or you're done with it. You're beating it out. You're making sure the tops, the bottoms are work. You should always be developing ideas, asking yourself these questions, these questions, right? But then you should doing the six character development test. You should take, be going from idea to outline. And remember, I want you to write down after you get your idea, six developed characters and add, answer all of these questions for every character. What is their name and age? What types are they? What is their function in the story, right? What is their goal in the story? What is their relationship with other characters? What's the matter with these characters? What are they hiding, right? This is invaluable for you to develop a new idea, right? What is their dramatic action? What, what is it they, they decide to do, right? You know, and if they're a comic character, what is their obsession? What is their fixed attitude? You should be taking at any time your, your 250 word synopsis that you're always these are the ideas, the spine that you're developing and developing the six characters underneath them. And when you develop the six characters underneath them and you can get the six characters, right? Then you're gonna test your idea. And how do you test your idea? By running it back through this lecture, the three act structure, setting it up, giving me 30, trying to come up with the 30 steps, right? So you should be going from synopsis to character to potential outline. And once you crack the outline and you and you feel you have beginning, middle, and end, all of these all of these questions are answered. You have viable characters, right? That idea is ready to write. You're finishing an idea. You're starting to write another idea, and you're always coming up with ideas. It's this flow, so it becomes a habit. The thirty minutes a day that you sit down, you know, just by sitting down and committing to being a writer. You know, a screenwriter, the most successful form of writing by sitting down every day and saying, OK, I'm writing and you could be doing one of three things. I'm writing a 250 word synopsis for, you know, a, a potential idea. I'm developing an outline for an idea. I, I'm developing characters and an outline to see if this idea I can actually write it right now or I'm polishing a script. Right. You can always be doing that and sit down and 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 when you sit down and you commit to something right, whether it's good or bad and it goes well, you'll get more out of it. You know, the 30 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, I say in the intro class, just do it two or three times a week. Try to commit to it. If you wanna be a writer, try to commit to sitting down 30 minutes a day and hopefully it becomes more than that, but an achievable goal. It's like your workout plan. I need to do this. I need to go for this walk. I need to do this many steps. I need to do this many reps or whatever you're doing. Sit down and think about what it is you're gonna write. Now. I suggest you don't really market your stuff until you have more than one done, right? Um, you know, you have them underway, right? Have have a have a you know two or three shorts of a feature. Enjoy the writing process. Get yourself a library um, of ideas and screenplays, and then. Once you, let's say you have one and you know it's cooked and you got another one on the way and another one on, a day, on the way and you wanna be a writer, you know, there are places that you can go. Now, a screenplay can get you into a graduate school. A good short film can get you into a graduate school. A good first act can get you into a graduate school. You know, so maybe you're an undergraduate right now and you're thinking, oh, you know, why would I wanna to go to graduate school? You wanna to go to a graduate school um, because it has an association with industry. You know, the schools in LA, Chapman, um, of course, USC, UCLA, Chapman, AFI, NYU, those are kind of big ones, but there are film schools that will connect you, graduate programs that will connect you to industry and get you jobs 
in the industry, right? So it's it's worth it. And then in order to get into one, you ha have to have a finished screenplay. And if you have a finished screenplay, right, that's why you must finish your screenplay um, and have more than one screenplay, always have ideas going. So graduate school is invaluable. Let's say you just want to get your script out there in the world, right? What can you do to build a resume for your script, right? And this is the marketing your script. I sent this to you guys, but it's really basic, right? These are these are easy ways for you to just see how your idea is. And Ink Tip is is a really interesting one. And I'll just go on and look at Ink Tip. It's a Craigslist for scripts. It's where writers post scripts, and it's where producers, production companies go and look. It's sort of an indie um, way to, to, to post your idea and see if anyone's interested. And there's been actual feature films, I believe it's in the 400-ish range that have been made, but lots of options. What is an option? An option is if somebody gives you money for your idea. They don't buy your idea, they put it in an option for one, two or three years, right? Um, you know, it could be longer, but usually that's about it. And they give you two thousand five thousand ten thousand dollars right and then they could renew the option or not um you want to use your screenplay to get into a graduate school but you also want to use your screenplay to make and your idea to make a contact with agents managers and producers and this is the hollywood creative directory very simple you can get a used copy on an amazon i can get it for 15 20 30 dollars and what is the hollywood creative directory the hollywood creative directory is a list of actual companies that are in business and what you're going to do is you're going to go through production companies who make movies that are similar to the movie that you've written and you want to write them a query letter what is a query letter it's essentially the first paragraph is this is your idea right um the next is that you are a writer um and you've studied um you know, you've studied with someone like me, you know, and who, who actually, you know, has connections in the industry and has taught you how to write, you know, use my name, um, uh, use the university, this university or whatever university you go to make up, set yourself apart, right? And lastly, you know, you want to give them the hook in your story, give them the hook about you, let them know there's more to come. There's always more to come if you want to be a writer. If you're a one trick pony, you've written one and done, no one's interested. No one's interested. So Ink Tip is sort of like, hey, I want to see if somebody likes my script. Hollywood Creative Directory gives you, I say you go to producers, production companies, um, and managers before agents. Don't even approach an agency until you've had three or four scripts that are really, that are polished and then have done things. And what do I mean done things? You can go on their screenwriting contest everywhere. Right? There's screenwriting contest everywhere, but there are screenwriting contests that are that are sort of game changers, and I've listed some here that are game changers that are worth the investment when your screenplay is done. Right, the Nico Fellowship, Universal Pictures Emerging Writer Fellowship, Austin Film Festival Screenplay Competition, Sundance Screenwriters Lab, Blue Cat Screenplay Competition. These are all competitions. And you know organizations that will take your script, and if your script places here, give you immediate access into industry, right? So these are worth it, right? Are all of them worth it? No. If they're just offering you cash prizes, you know you didn't write your screenplay for someone to give you five thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars. Might be nice, right? But you want more than five or ten thousand dollars for your screenplay, right? You want industry access. So if you're vetting screenplay competitions, right? For instance, there's a local one that I'm affiliated with in the Bay Area called CineQuest. Um, we bring up people from industry to give you feedback on your screenplays and the winner gets to meet people from, from industry, right? Not, you know, Universal Pictures Emerging Writing Fellowship or the Sundance Screenwriters Lab, but at least industry access because you just don't want to be spending you know 30 to 60 dollars to try to win money for your screenplay that's not your, your goal is to make contacts right so i say use screenwriting there are some screenwriting competitions that are worth it the goal is for you to get yourself exposure right you you do this you you go to the creative uh, directory to get exposure ink tip to get exposure right and this is where i'm going to shift now make it a habit 
whether you want to be a writer, producer, or director, the one thing that you can do, and I think all of you who've taken this class, right, know that it's not that hard. It's hard to put the time in, but it's not that hard. So put the time in, write, 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 write. Um, all of my students, um, former students who are working professional writers have one thing in common. It's not that they were super talented. It's they got into a habit of being writers. I can tell you how many people say, hey, uh, they finish one screenplay, they have a half a screenplay finished and they want to uh, hook up an industry. Be a writer, put your 10,000 hours in, make it a habit, always be writing, always be writing, just like it's a, a healthy habit, give you a good, great outlet, but you're building a career. You might be building a writing career, you might be building a producing career, maybe even a directing career, you don't know, right? But be producing material because if you have material, you have the potential to get into the industry. Now, you have screenplays, right? You decide you don't want to go to graduate school. What do I do? You go to an agency, right? This is where the Hollywood Creative Directory is, will be useful to you. You go to an agency and you, and, you, uh, and you go to an agency or you go to a production company and you don't try to sell your screenplay, you sell yourself. As someone who has studied screenwriting, has written screenplays, has understand story, and you've done coverage, right? What is coverage? It's an analyzing a screenplay. I can get you a gig if you're taking my screenplay with CineQuest doing coverage. You can get actual practice doing coverage. And coverage is real simple. Analyzing how well the plot is, how well the dialogue is, how well the story is, right? And there's a template for coverage, right? It's something that you can get in the practice of doing. And if you can write a screenplay, you should be able to cover a screenplay, right? You go to an agency, you go to a production company and say, I would like an entry level position, happy to do, I've written a screenplay and I can do coverage. And you get in and essentially your job is gonna to be to get all of the submissions you're submitting, but let's say all of these submissions, you're gonna read, you're gonna analyze, you're gonna read, you're gonna analyze. Do you remember what I told you when this class first started? The most important thing you can do besides writing is reading. Always be reading screenplays, read screenplays that you find fascinating screenplays you like, right? So it's a joy to read, like people who love to read whatever your favorite form of fiction is, right? Read your favorite form of screenplays. The more you read, the better you'll be at coverage as well too. So, and then you get in and what you're gonna do for these companies, you're gonna read screenplays or these agencies or these production companies, you'll be reading screenplays that you might not necessarily love, but you'll be familiar with it and you're gonna do coverage, coverage, coverage. This is how you work your way up. You become a development executive. This is how you get yourself known as a creative person in the business. You become a producer, you become a writer, right? That is the best way in you. And you and do you need to move to LA to do this? Yes, right? Should you move to LA if you wanna be a writer? Yes. Do you have to move to LA if you wanna be a writer? No, no, you can, as long as you keep continuing to get in the writing habit, but you should right? You should, if you're going to go work for an agency, work for a production company, most of them are going to be there, right? Most of them are going to be there. So that's sort of the flow, right? You need to be using this lecture to be always be developing ideas. What is the spine? Who are these people in the ideas, right? Then you need to outline your ideas, right? You need to run all your ideas through these questions and come up with the 30 to 50 scenes, right? And then you need to write. I've shown you how to do that, right? And you need, eventually when you get material, market yourself, right? Don't let your stuff sit on a computer, right? Don't let yourself sit on a computer, right? Throw it out there. This is simple, stupid stuff that you can do, right? Eventually, right, eventually, if you get into a habit of being a writer, and and you and you're going to get better and you're going to get better if you're reading screenplays and you're writing screenplays you're going to get better you're going to get better you will be able to get a job in this industry you will and you don't know exactly how you're going to get in but you're going to be able to get a job in this industry and that's that's what you want to do um i'm hoping that i've made you confident that this is not hard to write a screenplay but it has to become a habit for you to be a successful screenwriter just because you did one and you can do one, that's not enough. You need to make it a habit, make it something you want to do, right? If it's something you want to do. Um, and that, that is the, the most important thing that I can tell you um, in my experience is that you need um, to love the story that you're writing, to want to write the story that you're writing and to want to find another one that you want to write and another one that you want to write and keep doing it. And eventually you won't be able to be the one dictating what you want to write people will be having you write 
what they want you to write. You'll be working. And if you love story, you'll, you might fall into something that, that you love developing in writing. Right. So that's, that is my um, lecture on not lecture. That's my, my sort of like wrap up for the semester on make this a habit. I've given you the tools. I've given you the resources to make it a habit. Now, anyone who has ever taken my screenwriting class, this is not, let's say you've, let's say you've stumbled upon this somehow and you found it online, that's not good enough. But if you've actually been one of my students who has taken one of my classes, the option for you is always open to send me a screenplay, right? But I don't want you just to say, here is a screenplay, you know, tell me what you think. I want it in a certain phase. And this is the deal I'll make with anyone who's taken my screenwriting class. If it's a short, write the whole short. Give me the short and I'll give you notes on the short. Great. If it's a feature film, right? The minimum I want, if it's a, if it's a feature that you're writing, I want your 250 word synopsis, right? And your character list. And I can say, yeah, that sounds great but you should know that. I don't really want that. I would take your first polished act and the rest of your outline. And I'll give you a feedback on that. That's something that I'm happy to do. Get your first act. Let me see your outline. I'll give you feedback. But let's say you, you, you're good at that now and you just need me to, to read your, your polished draft, your draft. Just send me your draft. I'll give you notes on it. Send me your draft. I'll get notes on it. So for the rest of your writing career, I'm happy to evaluate ideas for you. And it'll be brief. Yeah, that sounds good. Or, ooh, that's, that's something that I've seen before and it's probably not a good idea. Happy to read shorts that you write. Happy to read your first acts, right? And evaluate your second acts or give you polishing notes, right? Give you polishing notes. Um, and then tell you where to take your stuff as well. So that's I, that's the class. And I, and I appreciate all of the hard work. This is not easy um, to commit. To working on your screenplay but but everyone in this class um has produced you know fantastic material um does it mean you're going to be a great writer no does it mean you have the potential to be a great writer yes if you put the time in 